call you great God Jehovah. We magnify you in this place and we decree and declare that your word go forth like a mighty hammer and be that of like fire in the name of Jesus. We decree and declare your word, Psalm 21 and 8, that you will lay hands on the enemy and your right hand will defeat our foes. We thank you that you will lay hands on the enemy in the name of Jesus. Release your hand in this place in the name of Jesus. We humble ourselves under your mighty hand and you will bring exaltation in the midst of us in the name of Jesus. We release the authority of Jesus Christ and we decree and declare everything, everything not like God. Bow your knee to Jesus. We release the authority of Jesus Christ. We decree and declare deliverance, 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 deliverance in the name of Jesus. Release deliverance in this place. We decree and declare salvation that Jesus Christ, the blood he shed on Calvary will be invoked. We decree and declare that the power, the healing power of the blood of the Lamb will be released. We decree and declare that breakthrough, healing, deliverance, breakthrough, healing, healing, and deliverance, breakthrough, 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 breakthrough. We decree and declare the record breaking breakthroughs and serial wins that the triumph of Jesus Christ will be made manifest in this place. We give you glory and we give you honor and we give you the fruit of our lips. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Give him the fruit of your lips. We bless you, O oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name.
a miracle worker in this place. Lift your voice and shout aloud right here in this room. Hallelujah. Anybody expecting a miracle on tonight? Come on, lift both of your hands in the air while your hands are uplifted. Can you begin to give him glory? Come on. It's in his presence that you receive everything you came here for. He is the God of miracles. He does work wonders. Come on. I just need some people came expecting tonight to begin to lift his praise up in this place. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We reverence you. You're the God of miracles, signs and wonders. We believe in your power. We believe in your power. You're the God of miracles. Come on, sing it, y'all. Signs and wonders. We believe in your power. We believe, we believe in your power. You're the Signs and wonders. Signs and wonders we believe. In the believers in this place. We believe. We believe in your power. Take it again. You're the God of miracles. Signs and wonders we believe. We believe in your power. We believe. We believe in your power. We believe in your supernatural. You make 
make the talk man talk. You make the lame man walk. You make the tall man talk. And he's still working miracles for your family. He's working miracles for your children. He's working miracles for your parents. Lift those hands. Some of us need a miracle. And although we may not have much to say to you, I got a whole lot to say to him. I want to give you some space to just lift your heart to heaven. Come on, lift those hands as a sign of surrender. That what's about to leap outside of my teeth up into heaven is something that I need God to do. Now don't let your mask be too restrictive. Let your heart be the song. Father, we need you. We need you to move on our behalf. There are mountains that we can't move on our own. There are valleys that we cannot cross without your safety. There are storms that we can't endure unless you speak peace to them. And so we as a courageous body of believers have decided to gather in this space tonight on Wednesday in belief that by the time Friday gets here, that we will be looking a miracle smack dab in the face. If you believe that, lift something up out of your belly that reminds the atmosphere who's in charge. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I got a miracle with my name on it. And I know God will work a miracle. Oh yes, he will before the night is over. God, you gotta work a miracle. Oh yes, he will. In the middle of the night, I wish you'd worship him. Middle of the fight, where is he? He's working miracles, signs, and wonders. What is he doing? He's working miracles, and signs, and wonders, and wonders, and wonders, and miracles, and signs, and wonders, and the moon turned to blood. Yeah, and 
the clouds roll back. What is he doing? Miracles, signs, and wonders. Yeah. Miracles, signs, and wonders. Miracles. Interception. These are not tears of depression. I got a feeling that what I've been believing for is a shadow. Of now I'm gonna let the band prophesy to you. You don't get a cheerleader. Let these minstrels open heaven for you. Come on, that's it right there. You on your own now. your voice. Come on. The praiser next to you survived the greatest hell of their life. And if their excitement makes you nervous, I want you to find a safer seat to sit in. Because this person is about to marry the cries of the righteous and the determination of my feet and when the two meet i might accidentally bump you and i don't i don't want to make you nervous but tonight is my night Woo. look at your neighbor and say neighbor come on look at him he's behind your mask say neighbor i'm proud of you because i know half your story tell him half your story 
would have killed half the people that criticized you yesterday. Now do me a favor, clap in their face and tell them I'm so proud of you. I just don't know, oh, only know half of them. But half your story is enough to quit right there. Half your story is enough to throw in the town. Lord, I got to get out of here. I said half your story. Do me a favor and point at somebody behind you and say, I can still see half your story. Come on, prophesy to him and say, I see half your story. But tell him, he that began a good work in you shall perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Tell him, my story's not over yet. I wish I had a Baptist church. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, this is my story. Lord, help me. Come on, tell him, say, this is my story. Now tell him I'm praising all day long, all day long. Take 10 seconds to give him praise. I'm not the preacher tonight, I'm the praiser. I got to get out the way. But before, that's it, honey, praise him. But before I let you go, I need somebody to know that half the book has been written. But there's a new covenant coming in three days. That's only half the story. I'm gonna let it go, but look at him and say, neighbor, that's not how the story ends. Time to go. In three days, I know it's not Sunday, I'm practicing. I say, in three days, he rose again. Come on, prophesy to him. Say, he hung his head. If you're grateful that he hung his head so you can lift yours, go up and praise really quick. I only got 80 seconds. I can't play with it. He hung his head. You ain't got to hang yours no more. Stretch him wide. Woo! If you feel like you've been stretched beyond measure, give him praise that they stretched your Savior. My stretching days are coming to an end. Stretch my mind. You stretched my peace. You stretched my joy. I cried more the last 82 days than I have my, it's time for me to come in healing. Praise is a weapon, it's not only contingent upon the cooperation of your emotions, that is okay. But some of us praise him off muscle memory. We don't, we don't necessarily need the click track. All I need is an active memory. And when I start thinking of the goodness of Jesus, get ready to label me as an ignorant fanatic because my limbs respond to the goodness and the glory of God look at your neighbor real quick and say neighbor I'm gonna dance for 20 seconds real quick tell him you ain't gotta dance I'm gonna dance for both of us now you can stand there and lie like he ain't been good to you and I'll let the banjo prophesy to your future that you're about to get a new beginning I need two praises on every row hurry up let's go it's almost good Friday I said it's almost time for the culmination of our belief system. Praise him, honey. Yes, I am redeemed. Don't rejoice because demons tremble. I need you to dance. That's it, Pastor Chris. Lead us. Dance because your name's been written. I'm going to see if you'll tell the truth. All the people that were sinners and you were on your way to hell and the blood grabbed you. Hurry up, go up and praise because the blood got you. Yes, 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 yes. Woo! If the blood grabbed you, give it praise. Yes, give it praise. Yes, give it praise. I need all the car accidents.
violent survivors, all the domestic violent survivors, all the alcoholic survivors. You got nine seconds, make it count. get another opportunity to shout unto God with a voice of triumph and to express the goodness and the gratitude that you have in your heart for your Savior if you love Jesus clap those hands don't stand just clap those hands because you love Jesus amen I am so excited about tonight's encounter we decided to put a pause on our spring semester journey as we had been doctrinally journeying through the Word of God to sure up our belief system. But tonight is more of a night where your faith is going to be ignited. And when your faith becomes ignited, you can believe God for the impossible. Look at somebody and say, what are you believing for? Now, they're going to look real shy like they're not believing. Just stare at them until they answer. Come on, ask them, what are you believing for? Come on, ask them. Wait for an answer. Tell them, don't lie. What are you believing for? Yeah, he's going to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that you can ask or think God is more than able he's capable he's more than capable he's willing he's more than willing he's loving and because of these undisputable facts your God is going to show up on your behalf and so I'm grateful for that to all of our uh, I see a few of our visitors it looks like most of everybody's homegrown but to all of our visitors that are in the building you're watching online thank you so much uh, for worshiping with us everybody get your phones out really quick uh, our greeters already ministered to you when you came in so I want you to jump in the comments really quick and be kind go to the All Nations Facebook page go to the YouTube page get in those comments and say hello to all of our online partners that are worshiping with us and then after you do that hit that share button I think God has deposited something in the heart of our a great apostle that something supernatural is going to break out I want a word from God how many of you are looking for a word from God tonight yeah, I think that it's going to be that kind of night where the heavens reveal the heart posture to us of what is getting ready to go. Let's, uh, let's get our offering together. We're getting ready to sow. Everybody get an offering in your hand. You're watching online. You can text A-N-W-A-M-E-M -E -E to 77977. Again, that is A-N-W-A-M-E-M -E -E to 77977. If you need an offering envelope, the attendants are going to wait on you. If you'll just raise your hand, here they're coming down the aisle to make sure that they serve you in excellence and safety in Jesus name uh, if you don't need one that's fine get your phones out uh, here's what we believe we believe that seed that is sown never leaves my life it really goes and supports my legacy and so everything that I sow it does come back to me it is the greatest kingdom investment to cut away from your life and to plant and trust in God what you are sowing in faith whatever you have in your hand if it cannot meet your need, then it is probably the seed that you need to sow. And so I want to encourage you to ignore and defy your own logic and the devil and not to come into the hallucination that God is going to leave you out for dead. He will supply and he will respond. All right. So everybody get your offering together. I'm hurrying because I'm ready to hear what God is going to say uh, through our incredible apostle. Let's all stand. I want to pray over your offering. Let's stand. Let's stand. Don't forget, Build This House is coming. Clap your hands for Build This House. 
I'm excited about that this Friday night. Uh, we've got some incredible things planned. I'm believing God for strong impartation from life to life. And uh, as the ministry of Jesus Christ enters this room um, on that Friday night, you will experience great impartation. We're sowing seeds for souls. That's what these pictures are down here for. By the time Good Friday comes, they'll be all over uh, the cross. It is just a symbol of faith. That's all. We're not making a doctrine out of it. It's just a symbol of faith to attach our expectation that in faith what Jesus accomplished on the cross he will symbolically accomplish for our family members as well and so we're doing it in faith it's just a point of contact for us to believe in and uh, I want to give you that opportunity there's a way for you to do that you're watching online because you're going to be participating as well you can text build this house to 77411 and we will print your picture you can literally text us that picture of that family member we've got a ton of them that's why they're printed out like that and so we'll make sure that we put your family member on the cross and believe for something supernatural lift those phones up I want to pray over your seat and then the next voice that you're going to hear I'm going to introduce our apostle father thank you so much that you're going to do something explosive in the life of your people in this seat I thank you God that you are going to remind them who's in charge I thank you that debt will not be Lord of all. I thank you that you are the deliverer of it all. In Jesus' name, amen. Please remain standing. Our apostle needs no introduction. And so I will not attempt to find elaborate words to try to introduce him and explain the gift of God on his life. What I will tell you is open your heart wide. Open your spirit, man, to receive what God has deposited in him. This is no ordinary moment. And if you'll receive it in faith, you'll yank out of him stuff he didn't plan on leaving here. Amen. Can you please clap your hands and give God a thunderous praise for the ministry of Dr. Matthew L. Stevenson III. Come on, I said clap those hands, all you people. We're going to make our declaration and then we're going to go into the preaching of the word um, and you know you have home training so you understand that there are things we have to say before we talk it, it's called manners and in all nations worship assembly one of our manners is we have to let whatever is operating in the second heaven know they're not in charge <laughs> What God wants to do in Memphis tonight is going to happen. And so we just have a tradition where we make it known who's in charge. We are seated in heavenly places. And so we decree because of where we sit. <laughs> and that's what we do. So we're going to do that. And then we're going to get through some formalities. And then we're going to get to the preaching of the word. God is exalted. The devil defeated and I've got the victory God is exalted the devil is defeated and I've got the victory God is exalted and my Memphis God is exalted hey the devil is defeated and I've got the victory come on ten seconds Act like you lost your mind and praise. Obey. Woo! Come on here. Let's go. We're not going to play tonight. Come on. Move. Pastor. Hallelujah. Before you sit down, before you sit down, I've resolved, Pastor Chris, Pastor Keandre, I don't have English words for how much I adore Pastors Brandon and Christabel Flack. I, um, this man and woman means so much to me. And uh, anytime I'm in their labor, their work, we planted this church several years ago. But even the planting of this church is not more important to me than the success, the victory, the power behind their lives. I love this people. Um, can we honor and acknowledge 
Cast is Brandon. Uh, louder, 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 louder. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. What's up, y'all? Hey. I love you. I have a word from the Lord. Um, Pastor Brandon, if I go over my time, please correct me. I don't know where Donnie is, but uh, uh, okay, I see some time up there. I need that. Um, whenever I, I spend time in prayer, I come out long-winded. So you, you got to be careful about letting me pray. I have a word from the Lord. First of all, it's good to see you. And um, second of uh, Darrell, of, of course. Um, if you are here tonight in the middle of a tornado warning slash bad weather, it's because God knew you would need to hear what I have to say. Um, there's something that needs to be said to you tonight, and, and I do have a word from the Lord. I'm going to um, design this message irregularly. It's going to look and feel different, but I think it's very, very, very specific to you. And, and they that are not here tonight, Pastor Keandria, make sure that they get the opportunity to hear it because I think it's probably for more people that are here uh, uh, in this physical room. It is great to be here. Um, don't shout. Do you promise? <laughs> Vincent, obey. I don't want a runner, a dancer, a nothinger. Obey. The title of tonight's message, I'm going to have to construct this in a weird way, but the title is How to Make a Comeback. Now listen, what I'm going to teach you tonight is that you can come back from anything. The cross is more than just recompense or judgment of sin it's about human resilience put your hand on your chest wait a minute and say I can come back from anything <laughs> our pastor has been in a, 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 a teaching series on the cross and uh, he and I differ in one way in that he has a Pentecostal heritage and I was not fortunate enough to have that. I was missionary Baptist until I found the... Oh. Until I found and, and got filled with the Holy Ghost. So my understanding, watch me, of salvation is, is interesting. It's complicated. It's, it's, it's rich. It's, it's deep. And what I learned is that when people have any experience and they are introduced to what they espouse is the good news. Come on, open up. They have a suspicion on how good the good news really is. So when they hear that, that, that I was done this way and or treated this way and or this happened to me and this is my background, very oft, it doesn't seem, seem like the good news is good enough. So what happens is we have to do harder work at presenting the good news. The gospel needs redefinition. And it's because we made it what it wasn't. We made the gospel about heaven and hell. When the gospel was really about, for God so loved the world. And Now, I have to introduce this to you. And then I'm going to get into the meat of this, but you have to promise me, I know Memphis, you will not run, you will not shake, you will not rattle. My salvation is by grace through faith. My salvation is by grace through faith. My salvation is by grace through faith. Now, you get excited over faith and grace. I get excited over by and through. My salvation is by grace. That means that the premise, the, the justification, the reason behind my faith is grace. But it's also by faith because faith is daily. 
So grace and faith work in tandem in my salvation, in, in, in my understanding of my proximity with God. So if I, for whatever reason, start to act like, behave like, believe like, my uh, salvation is based upon what I do right or wrong, then what I'm going to lose is the authority of grace and faith. And if I lose the authority of grace and faith, then I have no real power over my adversary because he's not after my perfection. He's after my belief. And so because of that, if I believe wrong and if I confess wrong, then it's always going to be wrong. Fundamentally speaking, hey, twins, we're in Holy Week. Woo! And I'm a little churchy, just a bit. And... um. What I appreciate about our God, you ready for this, is that he gave us a Jesus. I know you want, I, I'll come back on a Sunday and preach for like, because you don't want a preaching church. I, I said, I thank God for a Jesus, for, for a paraclete, for, for a helper, for a Messiah for someone that would would care enough to die on the behalf of a yeah i i hey glory i thank god for jesus my scripture tonight is matthew 28 and 6 it's going to be simple but i'm going to teach you tonight um how to make a comeback because you can come back for anything from anything easter resurrection sunday and 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 pastor's gonna wear us out sunday i know he is you know lc is gonna prophesy and lay hands and kill us all on resurrection is going to be amazing i'm just setting up a precursor and the precursor is you can come back from anything what human being dies and comes back <laughs> you can come back from anything and, and, and a major part of what the cross means to you and I is resilience. It, it does not just mean heaven, earth, hell, sin, demons. It means the human potential to come back. The devil can do whatever he wants. And I'll still come back. All right. Don't shout. Matthew 28 and 6. I'm going to say this and then I'm going to keep teaching you ready promise me Matthew 28 and 6 says he is not here <laughs> Lord Memphis is acting up he is not here for he is risen <laughs> as he said come see the place where the Lord lay. First of all, let's say this, and then I will give you and I will expodulate. Say number one, I'm coming back. Now, I don't know what that means to you and, and, and what that feels to you. And I don't know what the last 48 months did to you. But I'm challenging you tonight to say, I'm coming back. Um, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the crisis, Vincent, where your sister? Hey, baby. The crisis is Jesus Christ is no longer the icon. When we look at our Christianity, we have a lot of representations of what it means. So part of what people understand Christianity to be is morality. It's, it's, it's good behavior. It's positivity. It's, it's energy. It's the universe. But Jesus is no longer the icon. And the problem with that is that we have certain theological slash doctrinal slash uh, cultural idioms that take the attention away from our Jesus. And our Jesus was always intended to be the icon of our Christianity. We would have no Christianity without a Christ. Problem is, we started studying Christianity deeper than we studied the Christ. So, like, studying the Christ means that my value for my Christianity is rooted in a safe place. I am a Christian because I believe in Jesus. I don't have a preaching church tonight. 
I, I, I believe what I believe, not because it makes sense, but because of who said it. And, and, and so because I believe in Jesus, I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian because I believe him. I'm, I'm a Christian because he changed me. I'm a Christian because he found me. I'm a Christian because he saved me. I'm a Christian because he died for me. My mama gave birth to me. Hi! I'm sorry, y'all. But Jesus died for me. My mama pushed me out. But he brought me out. I'm a Christian. Have a seat, y'all. You didn't come tonight to have church. I'm a Christian because he saved me. I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. I believe in what he did by faith. In grace. Even when he, even when he tells me, no, I won't deliver you from this thorn. It is a messenger of Satan. I'll leave it there because my grace is sufficient. <laughs> throw, them, <laughs> throw them hands up and say, I'm a Christian. I'm a, right. Now, that's important for you to understand this because in a couple of days, we're going to be celebrating what many people think is about a bunny. You and I know, you and I know it's about the resurrection. But, 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 but can we have another discussion about the resurrection? Are we infatuated that the man got up from the dead? Are we in, or are we going to start to now consider what he showed us how to do? If I work for the ambulance, I can give you a fibrillator, and I can put something on your chest and bring you back to life. And that wouldn't be considered a miracle. But if you, by virtue of divine design and prophecy, can be raised from the dead, have a stone rolled away in a borrowed tomb and angels there, that takes more than science. So I have concerns about what he really was teaching us through the resurrection. I think he was teaching us how to come back. That means that in life, as a human being, you're going to have something that kills you. Help me preach. You're going, you're going to have something that robs you of life. You're going to have something that depletes you of all of your psychological, sociological, uh, uh, mental, emotional uh, prowess and ability and endurance. And you're going to have to be confronted with if you can come back. Jesus taught me how to come back. I wish I could. He taught me to come back. Now, when I got saved, I didn't know I would have to die. I thought all the talk about the cross and, and, and lay yourself down and all that stuff, I thought there was poetry. Open your heart now. I didn't know I was going to die for real. And that death was going to be like, hey, who are you? What do you want? And where you think you going? And are you anointed? And then Jesus gives us an icon. You can die. <laughs> be pierced. I love your word. Be stabbed. You can be beat upon your back. But I'll show you how to come back. I wish I had 30 people. Just 30. Lift your hands and say, I'm about to come back. Open your mouth now. Say, I'm coming back. I'm coming back. Um, people tend to look for you where they found you. Let me get to my text. When you change... When seasons change, people go to look for you where they last saw you. That means if they last saw you in defeat, and if they last saw you in despair, and if they last saw you in depression, that's where they're going to look for you. Some of you can't say man because you don't have the right to change. And, 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 and so as you start to change through your, lift your hands and scream process. Open your mouth and say process. Because that's a part of our challenge. 
we don't understand that everybody's in a process. The person next to you is in a process. Your wife is in a process. Your husband is in a process. Your friend is in a process. And if you judge their process because it's different from yours, you're not going to really reach into what the gospel is supposed to do. I'm going to connect it. A part of what the gospel does is give us grace for the process of others. I don't have to have your process. You have your own. But the good news is we all in process. Yeah. But the blood, okay, n never mind. Okay, so um, Jesus, write this down. This is Bible study, is the instruction of God. John 1, in the beginning was the word, and the word was God. So Jesus must become the icon of our Christianity. It can't, okay, you ready? The church cannot be the icon of our Christianity. Prophet, it's helped me. They're going to get mad. I said the church cannot be the icon of our Christianity. Jesus must be the emblem, the icon, the reason, the warrant, the face, the logo. He must be the symptom and the sign. A part of what that means is that if it's not Jesus, it's not truth. He's the word, which means he is, watch me direction for human life if i want to know how to live i'm working i've got to study a jesus if i want to know how to decide i've got to study a jesus if i've got to know how to choose i've got to study a jesus i've had several opportunities to study moral figures but they were not a messiah they couldn't save me they could give me examples and wisdom of how to approach life, but they wouldn't mind Jesus. But we have a Jesus. So as a Christian and as a human being, we have, lift your hands. Don't shout, y'all. Throw them hands up high and scream the name Jesus. We look to him. We live for him. It is because of him. That we live and move and have our being. He is our life lesson. There, 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 is, there is nothing more to learn aside from Jesus. I don't need to know how to be a good husband before I learn how to be like Jesus. I don't need to know how to be a good wife. I don't need a casserole recipe before I learn how to be. I want to be like him but we have him 33 years and so we have to be forced to believe that victory is found in him so then if Jesus is our exemplar of human experience and life you ready that means that you've never had an experience that he didn't have you've never felt an emotion not even now like no depression, help me, come on. No sadness, no grief. Everything you've ever felt as a human, he felt. He had to. And if you don't believe that, don't call him the king of kings. He is the king of kings because he went through everything you could. So now we get to my text, which is, come see where he lay. <laughs> he used to be there. Whew. He's not there no more. He came back. And, 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 and. A part of the comeback is a major part of your character. That's good. If you don't learn how to come back, there's a lot of things that you're not going to work through. The gospel at its core gives us power to rebound. Resilience. What do you think repentance is about? Repentance is about resurrection. I can get up from anything. I can be pressed and shaken and attacked and bruised and wounded and attacked and all of that. And it don't have to be my end because I got the gospel. And the good news is lift your hands and say, I can come back. 
Right. So we have this issue in Matthew 28, and, 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 and this angel announced this. So what I'm going to do for you in Bible study form is present to you what it takes to come back, what, what you need to do, what you need to say, what you need to meditate upon. Jesus knew he came to die. I wish I had a church. He was not unclear about his mission and or his assignment. Do what's talking about it from 12. He knew it. But we meet him now at 30 and then at 33. And, and, and a part of what he says to us is the reiteration of, of the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah 53 verse 10, I think. He says, it pleased the father to crush him, which means that just because you're sad don't mean that heaven ain't happy. Can I get 20 of you? I, I don't need everybody. There, there will be moments when you are in your worst state. And God will be getting glory. <laughs> it pleased the Father. I feel like preaching. It pleased the Father to crush the Son. Now, here's the problem. What do you do when you feel like the Father is treating you the same way he treated the enemy? The serpent was crushed in, Gesim, in, 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 in Eden, and, and now you're being crushed on Calvary, and you're being challenged to be so crushed for the rest of your life. So what is the crushing? What does it do? I believe and I surmise that it is the formation of human character. As God allows things to crush you, he forms how you behave. Open up. He forms how you react. He forms how you respond. He forms how you come back. Because here is the truth. Say yes. Your coming back is a character issue. If something in your life happens and your character is flawed, you won't come back. Have you ever met somebody who couldn't recover? I feel the anointing. Who couldn't recuperate. Who couldn't be resuscitated. Their character was not mature enough to come back. So the coming back power is a matter of character. But character is a matter of what you believe about the gospel. Now, the crisis that I'm coming to, Pastor Debbie, wherever you are, the crisis that I'm coming to, hey, baby, the crisis that I'm coming to is a lot of people don't know what the gospel is. They think the gospel is turn right or go left or get straight or go to hell or there's a lot of murkiness about what the gospel is. And so because we don't know what the gospel is, we don't know what to re rely upon it on. And if Jesus was raised from the dead, we need to humanly look at this reality. A man can die. <laughs> a man can be stabbed. A man can be wounded and, 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 and proliferated and pierced. But he can come back. That means that a part of the gospel has to be human resilience. It doesn't matter what happens to you. It matters what you do after it happens. Now, you don't want to shout, I'm fine with that. I have a question for you. What did you do after it happened? Okay, I want to know how you positioned yourself when it happened. After the death was over, what did you do? After the murder was over, what did you do? After the assault happened, what did you do? And the gospel, a.k.a. the good news, is you can do something after it happens. I can do something after it happens. Jesus gave me the power to do something after it happened. It happened. It happened. I wish this were. It happened. It happened. But, but, but the resurrection proved that I can recover from what happened. Number one, Jesus never intended to remain dead. If you're going to make a comeback, your intention has to be clear. Our text proves and substantiates that Jesus was very, very clear that he came to die but wouldn't stay that way. Put your hand on your chest like we're in counseling. Don't shout, Tevin, don't do it. And say this, it won't always be this way. Say it again, it won't always be this way. Jesus 
Jesus masterfully lived in the interim, the transition, the, the way to, the way through. It won't be this way all the time. And, 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 and so this unique thing about the comeback issue is Jesus had to live Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, knowing he would die, but he would come back. He intended to be raised. May your intention be sanctified. I'm old school. I believe in the power of an anointed motive. Even if you get it wrong, did you mean to do it right? Mm, 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 mm. That's good gravy. You'll taste it tomorrow. But, but, but did you intend to get it right? Jesus never intended to stay dead. He never intended to be in that grave long. He knew it was the interim. Can I have three people to shout for the interim? I just want, I want three people, just three. The rest of you, three people to shout for the temporary. Yeah, I'm renting, but I give him the glory. Yeah, I need something, but I give him the glory. Yeah, I want something, but I give him the praise. Yeah, I need something, but he is still Alpha and Omega. Clap your hands for the temp Woo! The temporary teaches me to trust. <laughs> the temporary teaches me to look. The temporary teaches me to believe. The temporary teaches me to keep going. The temporary teaches me to not quit. I praise God for the temporary. Now I know that the trust in the long term feels better, but the temporary changed me. I thank God for the interim, for the thing he let happen to me. I'm working in here for a little while because you will suffer for a little while. And when the little while is over, no. So, according to my text, come on, y'all. He didn't intend to stay there. This is the reason why he borrowed a tomb. He never intended to stay there. And when many people study Jesus from a historical standpoint, they don't study his intention. His intention was to be raised. Yeah, I was born here, but I'm not staying here. <laughs> yeah they said that but the gospel gave me room to be opposite from what they said it's about intention so the gospel gives us room for intention by faith interesting number two here is something pastor chris preached this just give me credit if my text is true jesus was never shy oh i feel something about to happen about speaking about his resurrection he would go to church at a midnight musical and they would be recording and shouting and all that and he would say stuff like destroy this temple and in three days i will be ready. he talked about what he was about to do i think what you don't realize about your throw them hands up and say come back you're not talking enough about it I think what's happening is you don't allow the gospel to control your glossary. So now the good news is not in your dictionary. So, so, so you're speaking through your personality. I'm working in here. You're speaking through your culture. You're speaking through your political party, your experiences, your belief. But the gospel has a glossary. You'll get that later. The gospel has a word, a language, a phrase, a verbiage, a way to express and experience stuff. And a part of what Jesus always did was say, hey, yeah, like Herod would be like, you, you, you the king of the Jews? He'd be like, whatever you need me to be. A glossary. He, they would say, you, you know, he, he cast out devils by Beelzebub. And he would be like, mm, 
Okay. I'm not a prisoner to what you think about who I am. My mentality is this. I'm on assignment for the good news. <laughs> and because I'm on assignment for the gospel, your opinions about my personality don't matter to me. I don't care about what you think about me. <laughs> That's your problem. <laughs> what I'm dealing with is the gospel. What I'm wearing is the gospel. What I'm bearing is the gospel. And if our gospel be hid, I'm working in him. It is here from those that are lost. So in the comeback issue, Jesus talked about it. You met me here, but you won't find me here. You knew me this way, but I won't stay. Yes, I'm acting different because the truth is I am. <laughs> And I'm sorry that you're mad at it. Shout at row eight right now. I'm sorry that you're mad about it. I'm not pretending. I'm really different. I've changed. I've been healed. I've been delivered. I've been set free. God worked it out. What key you in? Go down. Yeah, I am different. And Jesus spoke about it. I wonder, I wonder if some of your sin issues, we're talking about a comeback, is because of your shyness. Do you like to admit where you were? This is all in my text. I think there's a lot of people that don't have victory because they don't like talking about where they went. Were you mad at God? Did you believe the Bible? Were you upset at who your parents were? Did your circumstance offend you? Now, when you don't articulate that, scream preach. preach. You have no accountability for your faith. Throw them hands up high and scream, talk about it. The gospel is the gospel because it's in your mouth. And we're not talking about it a lot. We have to talk about it. We've we got to talk about it. That happened to me. That occurred. I was conflicted. I didn't know what to do. Jesus had those moments, and if he didn't have those moments, we wouldn't have a Bible. So he spoke concerning his comeback all the time. Number one, I don't intend to say this way. Yeah, you'll kill me, but I'll get up. Number two, I'm a... <laughs> Yay! Glory. Number two... I'm going to let you know I'm getting up. I'm going to vocalize it. But, 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 but number three, here is what's important for you to understand. Pastor Chris, and the same spirit, I'm talking about how to make a comeback. The same spirit that raised, this is my text, Christ from the dead. will quicken your mortal body. It means to come back alive. Now, this is Kojic territory. To the glory of God, I honor you. But quickening is not this. <laughs> Lift your hands and say quickening is not Tourette's. Now that's not, I'm not being disrespectful. Cause you ain't gonna outdance me. You ain't gonna outrun me. You ain't gonna out jerk or shake me. I'm, I'm gonna do, but the word quicken, I feel the holy, the word quicken means, whew, hold on. The word quicken means to pull from one state to another from one realm to another, from one dimension to another, from one reality to quicken. It means, it, it means to grab hard and pull from one place. So when you say she was quickening, we're not saying she did this. What we're saying is something grabbed it. Something grabbed her. Something pulled it from one place. And the Bible said that the same spirit that did what? Quicken Jesus will quicken your mortal body. It's the same spirit, which means that if I'm going to make a comeback, I can't do it in my own strength. You're not going to say, man, because this is where the correction comes in. When many people try to make a comeback, they do it in their own power. 
You've got to be raised by the power of the Holy Ghost. Jesus was not raised in his human strength. And he was God in flesh. I wish I had help. The Bible said that the same power, the same spirit that raised Jesus. If Jesus needed to be raised by another, who do you think you are? You need... Vincent, I'm about to make a mess. Get with me. It's 2022. It's 8.17 p.m. It's April 13. You got to have the Holy Ghost. Now I'm about to labor right here because y'all are quiet. I believe in the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You don't need to be a good wife without it. You don't try to be a good husband without it. You don't even try to plant a church without it. I don't understand how y'all keep preaching without it. I want to know, have you been filled with the power of the whole? Why y'all quiet? And this is Memphis. I thought y'all believed in tearing until he came in on a glad heart. Where is the Holy Ghost? And the problem is that people are trying to come back without the help of... Something devastates me. I need the Holy Ghost. Something ruins me. I need the Holy Ghost. Something crushes me. I need the Holy Ghost. It's not a hymn or medley. I don't give a darn about playing a CD or a I need the Holy Ghost. I need to be able to find a closet and pray. And, 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 and sometimes, depending upon how heavy it is, I need to pray in a different language. <laughs> Uh, because that language don't have communication issues and problems. It's a perfect prayer. I'll get back to that later. Ah, I need the Holy Ghost. And so if Jesus was resurrected by the Holy Ghost, why is the Holy Ghost not a priority for our churches? We need him. It's Bible study. I'm not going, but we need him. We need him. He's got to be at the forefront. People cannot, according to my text, People can't make a comeback without the Holy Ghost. That's the problem. You can douse them with oil and put water on them all you want. But if they don't got the Holy Ghost, they're not coming back. Do you think that water is going to save them from depression? Do, do you think that oil is enough to change the fact that their uncle molested them? Is that enough to confirm what that bishop took from them? No, we need, lift your hands and say, the Holy Ghost. I know the NIV is calling him the Holy Spirit. Chris, watch me. But I believe he's the Holy Ghost. And the reason I think he's the Holy Ghost is because somebody died and lived again. The comeback is proof that he's the Holy Ghost. I said the Holy Ghost. I said the Holy Ghost. He haunts men. He taunts men. He follows men. If I call him the Holy Spirit, I'm calling him my grandmother, my auntie, a dead relative. But when I call him the Holy Ghost, what I'm saying is that he is the expression of God that comes for me. He finds me. He walks with me. He talks with me. So if I'm going to make a comeback, I have to rely on the Holy Ghost. Now, this is why this matters to Jesus. Jesus was very reliant on the Holy Ghost. I know you were reading so fast that you didn't realize how reliant he was on the Spirit. But he really was. In his human tempta temptations, he relied on the Spirit. In his fears, he relied on the Spirit. In his doubts, he relied on the Spirit. It was about the Holy Ghost. Now, I'm going to tell you what your problem is. Don't make the Holy Ghost about music. chief is here don't make the holy ghost about dancing right. don't make the holy ghost a disease that you have to catch he caught the holy ghost i mean is he a frisbee or is he god but when you've been filled with the holy ghost it's a part of your everyday life. Lord, make me a better man. Now, now I'm going to say something, and only 12 of y'all are going to shout. I got a couple of more points. 
I thought something today that I prayed by the Holy Ghost that you probably ain't prayed in a long time. I'm going to challenge you to do it. Throw them hands and say, Lord, make me a better person. It's simple. You didn't like it. But it's a part of what the Holy Ghost does. He makes you a better person. And it doesn't mean that everybody has to like you. It just means that you're growing in grace. And it means that the fruit of the Spirit is just as strong as the gifts of the Spirit. And your children are benefiting from what the Lord is teaching you. Say, make me better. Oh, Chris, people don't want to be better no more. They don't pray to be better. They pray to be liked and seen and heard but when you're about to make a comeback after something has happened to you the Holy Ghost brings you back better than what better than what you were Je Jesus died a lamb he was raised a lion I said better than what you were your nature is about to change your strength is about to change your DNA is about to change scream the word better I didn't hear you say better prophesy and say better but it's better by the Holy Ghost it's not by my zodiac it's not by my degree it's by the Holy Ghost now you can say what you want Democrat Republican black white I've been filled with the Holy Ghost and as a man I've decided that I'm nothing without him you missed your cue I should have had two runners I know I'm nothing without him. I'm okay with it. I'm nothing without him. I'll cheat on my wife without him. I'd leave my businesses without him. I'd abandon my calling without him. I'd be on drugs without him. I want somebody to thank God for the Holy Ghost. I don't just serve him for sin's sake. I serve him for sanity. If I didn't have the Holy Ghost, I would have lost my mind. You wouldn't have known me after 2020 if I did not have the Holy Ghost. If I didn't have the Holy Ghost. So he was raised not in his own strength. I'm going to say something. Don't shout. Pastor Chris, obey me because this will touch you. Not by might. I'm about to take smooth off in Memphis. I, I, I feel a run in my life. Not by might. Nor by power. But by my But by my spirit. You will not do anything you're called to do in your own strength. If you want to make a comeback, you've got to abandon your strength. You've got to abort your strength. You've got to get before God and say, I give up. I quit. I'm at my wit's end. I need you. Help me. I need you. Fill me with the Holy Ghost so that I can be and do everything that you call me to be. Lift your hands and say, I need you. Throw them hands up and say, I need you. You didn't, you didn't get filled with the Holy Ghost to talk in tongues. You didn't need the Holy Ghost to dance. You're black. You know how to do that without, you got the gift of rhythm. You need the Holy Ghost to walk with you. But I, I got two more points, but this is arresting me. Because <laughs> we made resurrection about everything but the Holy Ghost. And we don't talk about who raised them to begin with. But it's the Holy Ghost that started the journey. It's the Holy Ghost that continued the story. Not by might, nor by power, but by might. It's not even by your intellect. It's not by your career. It's not by your degree. It's not by your experience. It's not by your mother, your father, your location. It's by my spirit. The problem is, is we've crafted a Christianity that didn't contain the spirit. And, and so subsequently, men are not really changed because it takes the spirit. 
when Jesus talked about his resurrection, he was clear with us. It will be by the Spirit. I won't leave you comfortless. He told the three, the 12, and the 70, hey, I am gone. It's going to look like defeat. <sighs> but I'm going to give you a helper. And, 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 and he's going to lead you. He's going to guide you. He's going to show you what must come to pass. He will be me without the limitation of the flesh. <laughs> I will send you the Holy Ghost. <laughs> and he will be with you. If I didn't send the Holy Ghost, you can't call me Emmanuel. Because then I wouldn't be God with you. But because I'm the Holy Ghost, I'm God with you. So he always relied on the Holy Ghost for a comeback. If you are under attack, somebody says something against you, comes against you, don't try to fight it in your flesh. You need the Holy Ghost. Your auntie, your mama, I know this is too simple for you, but I need to help. Your auntie, your mama, somebody comes against you, lies on you, it stresses you out. You need the Holy Ghost. Stop fighting this stuff in the flesh and <laughs> pull on the Holy Ghost. Your grandmama calls you a sleaze or a slut or says you're a failure or a floozy. You don't go back and forth with big mama. Let her have it in that nursing home. And what you do is you look to the east window and you say, Rose. You, you, you pull on the Holy Ghost. I'm here tonight to challenge Memphis to pull on the Holy Ghost. I appreciate your past tales, but where is the Holy Ghost? I appreciate your choir and your song, but I want to know, have you received since you believe? Who has the precious gift of the Holy Ghost? This is how you make a comeback. You develop a deep relationship. I'm almost done with the Holy Ghost. Here is another thing. Jesus' death was a lesson. It was not meant to mark us. We weren't saved just by his death. We were saved by his comeback. And I think the way that we approach the gospel, that'll mean more to you tomorrow because you didn't hear what I just said. But I, I think the way we approach the gospel is his death was more important than his resurrection. Everybody dies. Did you hear what I just said to you? Everybody dies. Not everybody is resurrected. So the power of the gospel is not just in the death. It's in the comeback. Christianity is a comeback issue. It means that we have been installed with and inherited with the power to come back from anything. What I'm telling you is nothing can stop you. Prophetess, I went all the way around the corner to tell you, oh, death, where's your sting? I'm about to run. Oh, grace, where is your victory? Come now. For the sting of sin is the law. The strength of sin is the law. But, but, but death has been swallowed up, which means I can't be stopped post but I got the gospel tweet I got the gospel uh, text I got the gospel and as long as there is good news the bad news don't weigh more I can come back if Jesus can go in a borrowed tomb can I preach to somebody that's renting right now there's some people in here that's discouraged because you're renting. But Jesus was resurrected in a rented tomb. I'm here to tell you he's about to break the curse. Let's go to church. He's about to deal with rent. You won't help me. Let's go to church. Don't wait till Sunday. What's wrong? He's about to deal with your rent. Your landlord is getting delivered because you've been filled with the Holy Ghost. It was a borrowed tomb. A borrowed grace. A borrowed space. And he was raised in something that wasn't his. So you, 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 you're going from rented to raised. That's what the resurrection is about. Glory to Jesus. You will be raised. But it won't be in your power. And it won't be in your strength. You know what I've learned? 
I really do believe the Lord has allowed stuff in our lives to weaken us. It's hard to say, but I really do believe he wanted us to know that we couldn't do it without him. We couldn't do 2020 without him. Come on, open up. We couldn't do 2021 without him. Can't do business without him. And what it's helped us see is that we were tempted to do a lot of stuff without him. And our resilience is being confronted right now. Which is why Easter and the resurrection is so important because there are more Christians that are shouting and dancing and speaking in tongues that have no resilience. They don't know how to come back. But the gospel is all about the comeback. Life happens. Come back. Mama happens. Come back. Daddy happens. Come back. Plans change. Come back. You may need to move. Come back. You may get fired. But can you come back? And if you can't come back, why are you shouting? Why are you dancing? The gospel is about to come back. And the human soul will always find a season where it's got to find something to come back from. My final um, um, issue is this. And I'm not going to give you all of it. It's a Bible study. Um, when Jesus came back, what I noticed is he wasn't alone. In my text in Matthew 28, when they came looking for him, it was the historical assumption that he would be roaming the streets by himself. But the problem is, the Bible says, if you consider the contextual gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, there was a lot of people that got up, which meant that his comeback was a catalyst for a lot of people to believe, I can come Right, so, 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 so what if your comeback is the starting point for the person next to you? What if your comeback, let's shout now, is going to be what the person behind you really needed to come back? What if somebody on row four is waiting on you for the permission to see if they can come back? And if what you say is true and you can come back from anything, then give us the permission to, to do the same. Your testimony is not what it should be because you don't believe in your comeback. I can, it happened, but I'm back. It attacked me. I'm back. They killed me. They really did. That Roman soldier actually pierced me. That happened, but I'm back. And because I'm back, I'm going to bring other people with me. <laughs> I got a word. I'm not going to share it now. But, but I want you to shout now. If you believe that everything you faced was worth somebody else's life. No, get me back there. What if what you suffered was for the sake of somebody's survival? Is this Memphis or no? I want 30 people that survived. Woo! I want 30 people that survived. 30 people that made it out. Woo! 30 people that made it over. Shout now. Because your testimony is their textbook. I told you, you survived. You made it out. And you're about to make a comeback. The resurrection. The resurrection is about the gospel. It is about the Bible. It is about Jesus. But it's also about what the blood do does for the human experience. And a part of what the blood does is it gives us resilience. I can live through death. I can live through loss. I can live through divorce. I can live through hurt. I can live through disease. Because upon his back are stripes. I can live through anything. What I'm trying to do is preach the give up out of you. Because you can come back from anything. 
I've not seen very many things that people couldn't come back from. So the reason my text is my text is because Jesus proved, even at death, I'll come back. You can come back. But focus on the comeback. Hey, it's happening. Focus on the comeback. Don't focus on the crisis. The crisis was the cross. <laughs> In their eyes, Jesus' death was a crisis. But he came back. Watch me. After, are you listening? After the comeback, you will have controversy. Somebody will have a conversation about what it took to bring you back. They didn't know where his body was or whether he was stolen or whether it was a lie. They tried to make it seem like it was theatrical. If you are a people pleaser, if you're concerned about their opinions of you, you will never come back. You got to handle the controversy. If, if, if the comeback means anything to you, be braced for the controversy, i.e., the only reason he came back was blah. The reason he was murdered was blah. The reason he's now saved, insert here. You're not going to control the narrative. Lose it. You can't control the coming back. Because he rolls stones away. And he does it by the angels. He does it with weeping women. I don't want to make a mess. Is there a woman in here that still wails? that that's what i want is there a woman in here that still believes in the authority of being the weaker vessel that's not an insult no it's a privilege to be a woman that wails <laughs> I, I i believe that in these next several months in memphis specifically women are gonna wail and 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 and, and they're gonna wail for people to come back there are people that, that don't have a comeback. And, and, and there are women looking for a resurrected Jesus. Come on, let's go. They're looking for, was he raised for real or not? Nah? And did this happen for real or not? Nah? And, and, and the women need to wail. There needs to be a prayer, a, a, a cry, a, a, a grievance, something in the belly that happens so that people can come back can come back from crisis now listen i'm not preaching it now i got a couple of months to do it but people don't even trust the church anymore there's no need for it the devil has digitized this thing where people don't believe in forsake not the assembling of yourself anymore they like why church i don't have time it's convenient <laughs> it's not about community anymore i want to know where the willing women i want to know if there's anybody that's willing to inconvenience themselves in intercession and say oh god raise a generation that will come back pull a generation that will come back pull a family that will come back pull up churches that will come back do you understand that in memphis alone there are churches that don't have a future because they had no comeback power but wherever there is calvary i wish i had help there is a comeback I said, wherever there is Calvary, there is always a comeback. It's redemption. Hey, it's holiness. It's righteousness. It's the kingdom. It's the power. It's the glory. But there is a comeback. I'm concerned about the international comeback. Look at it, y'all. There's a comeback happening. A comeback, a global comeback, mm. an international comeback, a financial comeback, a sociological comeback. There, there is a comeback. There, there is a reunion coming. It's, it's, it, this is not about the, the gold and the sheep and all. This is about a comeback. This is about a return. I heard the Spirit of God say, tell Memphis, there is a return. That sounds simple. But think about what it takes for men to return. And I'm not just talking about a building. I'm talking about principle, a focus, a discipline. Come on, God's moving now. I'm, I'm talking about a, a conviction. One of the things that, that, that is deep upon this movement is conviction. God, God touches men in the seat of their conviction. 
And I sense in Memphis, conviction is coming back. And I'm not just talking about sin. <laughs> I'm talking about a return. Because if you return, the repentance is easy. You'll repent if you return, but you've got to re return. Jesus gave us, demonstrated, exemplified how to come back. You don't come back in your own strength. You don't come back silently. Do you hear what I'm telling you? You don't come back silently. You open your mouth. Put your hand on her heart. You don't come back silently. I don't know nothing. Pastor ain't told. You don't come back silently. You open your mouth and you let the devil know you, you tried it. It almost worked. But I'm back. Lift your hands. I'm back. <laughs> I didn't even want to come back, but I'm going to tell you what you've been experiencing. God's been drawing you. And, and not just into a building, but into purpose. He's drawing you. Receive this. He's drawing you out of iniquity. This is your grandmother's mother's stuff. It's not new. It's been after every woman before you. But cry. Well. Labor. Mourn, <laughs> lament, right, right, I feel God, right, right, and then prophesy, there it goes, <gasps> prophets, it's there, but come back, <laughs> come back, I feel the anointing, um, you can come back from anything, that's the bottom line, the resurrection proves it. If Jesus could not be killed by the very act of death, you can come back. If you are every Christian in the room, raise your hands and scream. So I'm talking about a born again believer. You're not Nicodemus. I'm talking about if you are like, I know this is old school. I want you to, I want to hear who's saved. Like, So part of what that means is that you can come back. Jesus, hallelujah, he came back. I know he's coming back, baby, but he came back. You can come back. It doesn't matter what happens in life. The gospel, whether you realize it or not, has given you a resilience. That means that quitting is definitely an option, but it's not a fate. You don't have to quit. You can be resurrected. Paul said it this way, you knew him in the power of his suffering, but you will see him in the power of his resurrection. Throw them hands up and say, I can come back. Now listen, marriages can come back. Households can come back. Businesses can come back. Churches can come back. It can be resurrected. A part of my assignment in this season is to remind the church about resurrection power. That means you can come back. I know you lost a lot. But you can come back. That's the gospel. Think about a good news that ain't that good. What if the good news were you can stabilize? What if the good news were, I don't know, you'll get another start. But the gospel is I can come back. He was raised. After the worst human, he is our lesson. After the worst human experience, the most critical murder in the history of the world, he still came back. What I'm trying to tell you is, you can come back. It can come back. They can come back. You just got to believe.
now. What I know from the enemy is he's on assignment right now to convince people that they can't come back. Every Sunday, Fred, every Sunday, people are on their phones trying to figure out if they need to text, type, tweet, come, go. There's a war. It's like double dutch because people don't know if they can come back. They found some stuff in the pandemic to medicate themselves. Open your heart now. They found some addictions, some monsters to help them with their pain in the pandemic. For some it was sex, come on, let's go. For some it was liquor, for some it, and they don't think they can come back. And we stand at the precipice of resurrection Sunday. I challenge you to tell people you can still. That's the good news. You can come back. It don't have to kill you. Now, y'all almost lost me. It doesn't have to kill you. Could it kill you? Yeah. But it doesn't have to. <laughs> you don't have to stay buried. Even if you made up your mind, I can send angels to roll the stone away and you can come back. Let's make this comeback season. Let's find members that need to come back. Backsliders that need to come back. Preachers that need to come back. Open up. Evangelists that need to come back. Let's find intercessors that need to come back. Let's find worship leaders that need to come back. Musicians that need to come back. Sometime your victory is in your ability to come back. Now, to reiterate, I'm done. I'm not just talking about physical. I'm, I'm talking about principle. Lord, where did I lose you? Did I hear you? I didn't. Or what is the gospel in me? like to me did I get saved to run from hell or did I get saved because I loved you and I wanted to know more about you all of that matters in a comeback the resurrection is about a comeback they didn't preach that to us like that they preached it to us like Jesus got up from the grave ha ha nanny boo boo but what I see is a deeper meaning I see that no matter what happened I can die and live again. If you believe on me, as the scripture said, out of your belly, so you can come back. Now, I know this has been hard. We're going to pray. I know it's been a while. But this is comeback season. It's not just church growth. It's comeback. It's not just the, the sick and the shut in list. It's comeback. It's not just Bible study, and it's it's comeback, it's comeback, it's 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 oh, it's 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 the, the 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 prodigal son when he said, "When I came to myself, he lit." Vincent, listen to me, son. He literally confessed that he lost his mind. That boy said, "When I came to myself, there are people that are that belong to this place and other places that just lost their mind." But when comeback happens, they sober. They come to themselves. And we've got to be receiving people. Hey, you did it. It happened. But come back. It's okay. Can we grow a comeback church? Oh, I wish you would receive this. Can we be comeback leaders? Can we preach comeback messages? Can we have comeback methods? Do, as we prophesy, do we want everybody to repent or do we want them to return? And can they repent if they've not returned? I'm, I'm talking about a comeback people. A people that the spirit of death aggressively approaches. Now, the reason why you're not reacting is because you don't know what it took for the person next to you to live. The person, like, literally, whoo, 
The person literally sitting next to you has to war against Monday and war against Tuesday and war against Thursday just to find their sobriety and their sanity. And you're sitting here quiet because life is easy. Work is easy. Your mama loves you. Your daddy claims you. But there's some of us in the room that's had to struggle to come back. We've had to make up our mind. We've had to make decisions. We've had to make choices. Ah! We've had to do things on a daily basis. Just just to come back just to come back just to come back just to come back lift your hands just to come back higher act like it's just me and you and Jesus in the room ignore these people just to come back come on receive just to come back in your mind that's the warfare it's not about no job are you crazy this ain't got nothing to do with that house this is your mind i know i see your living situation it is uncomfortable you are stressed and cramped and you're tired of borrowing but it's in your mind it just to come back you got to come back you stopped praying last year come back you got to come back baby that I wish you understood the glory of God. Lift your hands now. Come back, sugar. And you won't die like she did. Come back. Come back. Come back. Come back. Come back. Come back. Woo! Something heavy is hidden here. I'm going to let it lift, but I, I want you to worship. Come on, push me now. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, come on. I'm asking you. I'm begging you. I'm beseeching you for the comeback anointing. You, oh God, are the comeback king. And you gave us Calvary as a forever symbol and as a forever sign that we could come back. Lord, as I touch this cross, I'm praying right now that every life, every story, every testimony, every sacrifice upon this cross as a symbol of Golgotha and Calvary, let them come back. Let there be a comeback anointing, a comeback revival, a comeback season, a comeback phase, a comeback place. Let this be the days of the comeback. Lord, bring them back. We want, we want the infidel, the rebel. We want those that are laying on the wayside, aunties and uncles and sisters and brothers and mothers and fathers let them come back we want backsliding preachers we want backsliding preachers discouraged pastors we want worship leaders musicians we want artists and poets let this be the day of the comeback raise up prophets my god they will cry until they come back prophesy until they come back preach until they come back witness until they come back bring them back like you did with hosea bring them back like you did with goma bring them back like you did with the children of Israel. Bring them back, my God. Summons, raise, sentence. Those that will come back. Right there. Right there. Come back. Ah, all over Memphis. Come back, come back. Come on, flow with me, y'all. The Spirit and the Bride say come. Uh. The Spirit and the Bride say come. The Spirit and the Bride say come. Pastor Brandon, come with me, please. There is something happening to you. Um, Stretch forth your hand towards LC, please. I tried my best to avoid this, but something's happening to you. God told me today he was putting something on you. It, um, 
that he'd been talking to you about new responsibility. And I said, well, Lord, what do you, you want me to do with this? He said, tell L.C., I'm going to make her to come back queen. And, and that in these next several seasons of her life, she'll be responsible for making people come back. It will be by wisdom. It will be by prophecy. It will be by song. It will be by writing. It will be by video. It will be by movie. It will be by documentary. But you will be like an anchor to pull men into the goodness of God. You will become like a hiding place. And it will be that although you think your tongue is sharp, that the Lord will use the accuracy in your mouth to bring men back. Because your destiny is first love. Now, I don't know what that means to you, but I'm going to tell you exactly what the Spirit of Grace told me. You have been anointed to bring people to their first love. Return to their first love. It's that revelation anointing. Seek ye first. Look first. Find first. And you're going into a different season. I see that there's a season coming where you're going to, you won't believe me. But it just cuss me out later. You love me, so you won't. You will ask to preach. It, it, it will not be that you're assigned to do it. You will ask to. And it will be because the word of the Lord is so powerful in your mouth for a comeback season. Like there's people that will hear you different and see you different. I don't know what this means, but the Lord said, tell you it's a deal. Whatever you just asked him, I haven't heard it, but he told me, tell you, I agree. So whatever you just positioned yourself before him as a deal breaker or not, like, Lord, if you do, if you, he just told me to tell you it's a deal. He's, he's, making the, he's making the same covenant with you that he made with Abraham. It's a deal. Your faithfulness has come up before him. It's comeback time. You've got to come back. And you've got to call a people. Come back. Your next assignment will include confronting idolatry in Memphis. You will teach men altars in worship and prayer. And you will speak as a voice of the Lord. And God will send you associates and assistants to help scribe out everything that you're supposed to do and be. You know more than what you know, think you know, but it's comeback season. Put your hands in this direction and scream from the bottom of your stomach, come back. This, this is a comeback church. After Resurrection Sunday, prepare for a comeback. You will have them come back. Now, when they do, as they do, they will be ill, sick, lonely, weary, worried. And you've got to avail yourself. Separate yourself. Separate yourself. Don't allow negativity to discourage you from your faithfulness. Pastor Brandon, there have been people in her ears that have discouraged her from serving. And about a month or two ago, she almost quit. Separate yourself. I know. Separate yourself and serve. You've got a heritage, an inheritance. Come back. There you go. That's it, John. Listen, that's the screech. That's it. More, uh, 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 more responsibility, more authority. I'll shut up if y'all want more. It, it's more. It's more. It's not less. Grab my hand. It's small. It's it's small. It's it's it is helps. Come with me. It is servanthood. It is. It is. Come on, Neil. It is yieldedness. It is intercession. It is evangelism it is it is teaching it is it is that but you, you got to stand up under it and stop being hazed you 
been going through a hazing process where it seems like those that were there before you are beating up on you and it's made you like back down open your mouth lady there's more god is calling you to come back throw your hands in this direction and say come back come to me i appreciate your singing but there's something more stand here your family will never again suffer at the expense of your calling Vincent, I love you. Hear that. I'm going to rebuke you. The Lord told me you've not said yes. The Lord told me you're singing. The Lord told me this is not pastor or LC. They've not told me anything. You're compliant, but you're afraid to be obedient. There is a pastoral anointing. God's been trying to put the shepherd's rod in your hand and you've been pushing it back. There's a, yet, a new yes. You need to stop talking about your grandfather and stop comparing yourself to your father and stop talking about that denomination and stop looking at what it's going to cost you and stop considering California and just say yes. You need to yield. You're not going to Atlanta. Have you lost your mind? It's yes. You. It's yes. It's yes. It's yes, Vincent. I'm going to take my time. It's yes. It's yes. It's yes. There's a people that won't come back if you just stick to the song. There's more for you to do. It's yes. An opportunity has recently come up that people don't know about. Uh, it's a manager or some type of whatever. The Lord said don't take it. Focus on what you were told to do. It's yes. Prophetess, is your husband here? Where is he? Find him. I'm, this is, come with your husband. Houses, houses everywhere. Houses and houses and houses and houses. This frustration that y'all have been on. I don't know nothing. I reiterate, Pastor has shared nothing with me. I don't even know if he knows the extent of what I'm about to prophesy about. But houses won't be one, it'll be multiples. Your desire and your cry to be a landlord has come up before the Lord. And the Lord is about to put you on one year of stewardship. You will budget, you will plan, you will prepare. And this is the final season where you hear your wife's warnings and don't heed. The Lord showed me that she would say a thing and you would think it was just her being her. But what the Lord was teaching you was how to hear the voice of the Lord, the wisdom of God. You will hear and you will heed. And as you do, you will move in entrepreneurialism in a powerful way. Now the Lord says, I don't know what this means, but take no thought to that that comes to criticize you from another territory. There is something happening from another land, another place, where your family says things about what you did and what you um, didn't do. I see it. These are men that are bitter. And it's made you very insecure. And it makes you procrastinate. Do I have a praying church or not? Javen, don't leave without hugging me. Okay. But you are the dream of your ancestors. You will walk into what they went to the grave without. 
It will be so in your life. Prophetess. The, the dream that you feel like you walked away from to encourage others, the Lord says he's going to give you the desires of your heart. It will be so. He's heard your prayers. He's seen your fasting. He's seen your notes in your phone. And what he's going to do now is perform the miracles that you've been believing for in your body and for your physical home. It's happening. Now, you spirit of infirmity, come to me, Noah. Do it now. Pray in the Holy Ghost if you got one. Put your hand on her head. There. In the name of Jesus, I command you to be healed every angle. You blood condition. I curse you off of God's prophet and I loose the healing power of Jehovah. This woman will travel, she will move, she will preach, she will disciple, she will teach, and she will not die. Hey! Where's Pastor Debbie? Come here. Give the baby to Keandra. Come to me. Is he gonna go? Oh, no. Stand with me. You are at an intersection. One door, one door, one decision, one decision. But you are also, if I mess this up, call me. You're in schedule for some form of promotion here. There is some type of talk about you doing more than what you do. I don't know this, naturally. I think Pastor Chris knows it. That's why I have him by me. But something is about to happen where your capacity is about to be stretched. I love and honor you for how you've served him. And I hate that I'm about to say this to you. Your greatest fear is about to come. You are a woman of more authority than what you want. Something is about to happen where the attention, the focus, the responsibility that you want to avoid, it's coming to you quickly. The Lord showed me that the sun was going to rise in summer and you would be serving in a different way and I'm going to tell you why. You vowed that you would never serve again in that capacity. You made an internal heart covenant that you would never give to another church what you gave to the last one. So although you're serving, come on, open, yield. It's just me and you. Although you're serving and although you're ministering, there's still more that you know to do that you are nervous. There's a hesitancy that won't come out of you. Lift your hands. In the name of the Lord Jesus, lay your hands on her. It happens now in you. It transfers the responsibility, the authority, the power, the reason. Hey, and Pastor Debbie, the Lord says those that are judging you have a learning disability. I see, um, I see people from a different uh, uh, land or different geographical location that just don't understand you. And they're judging you, telling you you should have your own church and you should be doing your women's ministry again and all. They're trying to call you back to a returned thing. But it's comeback season. And because it's comeback season, you've been assigned in this house as a shepherd. Do not relent. And let the Lord do in you what he needs to do. Ma'am, um, is this husband or hold hands, please? Um, you know, there's a need. There's a need for Anna's. 
um, in this particular work, something is about to happen where there will be people that come back to this place from other places. And you will need to, come here. That's for that ovary thing. That uterus issue. <laughs> You will be healed. That bleeding, I will, do I have a praiser in it? That bleeding is stopping now. Shout now. Oh, you will, you, you will become, the, this is weird. But what I see for you is what happened when the Bible says that John the Baptist was born. They wanted to name him something else. But God gave through an angel the right name. You will name men in this church. You will name them. You will declare their gift and their call and their position and their You will name them. You will have experiences where God will visit you about the potential of families. Do not, do not hide your marital testimonies. Those three times when y'all almost walked away from each other, don't hide them. Come on, don't hide them. Those are ministry. This church needs the power of the house. And you will preach it and you will prophesy it. Now, the Lord wants me to correct you. Fix this if I'm wrong. You can't hide behind her anymore. I don't know anything. I'm saying what I'm hearing by the Holy Ghost. This is not about your personality. This is about your purpose. You can't hide behind her. There is a thing, a ministry of wisdom in you that is bigger than what you give yourself knowledge for. You are a great provider and you are a great protector. But now you're moving into pronouncement. Your mouth is being touched. <laughs> it's being. It's being touched now. Come on, let's transfer gifts tonight. God's talking to me about a man child. Something's happening. There will be deliverance. I want 30 people in here to go up right now. I just saw a boy. I saw with my eyes. God's saving your son. Shout like you're crazy. Hey, is this Bible study or is this the whale? Hallelujah. Son of God, hallelujah. If you got a kid in here that God's trying to reach, shout like you're crazy. If I be God's man, he's reaching for the whole house. Shabbat glory. Shout glory. Come to me, you, yeah. What's your name? Hmm? Armani. Armani, you got a master's? Okay, so, so this other thing, you're trying to figure out if you should do or not? You should, that makes sense. 
I saw a master's degree. But I saw you wrestling with whether or not you should do another thing. Okay. You are to do it. And you are to do it by fall. Okay. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm literally looking at your lap book, your, your laptop. You were, as recently as last week, trying to figure out if you wanted to just, come on. Trying to figure out if you had the time and the space to do it. Lift your hands. This was Tuesday. This is God. He wants you to do it. Because there is a CEO thing for you. But the paper is going to make you make the introduction. There's more responsibility even in this house. And your family's church. Never mind. <laughs> Lift your hands. The spirit of fear has held you back from serving in this house in the way that you should. And it's been a condemnation. Something happened. You had a break or a slip. And it, it gave you grave insecurity. So now you just prefer to be unseen. Ashley, tell him no. It gave you grave insecurity, and it's made you rob your pastor from what he needs from you for real. And you know this, and I'm going to tell you how you know it. If I be God's man, you've been dreaming about it. God's been messing with your pillow about your service from an evangelistic standpoint, from a missional standpoint. There are things that you owe this church that you've not done to keep you out of the man you used to be. I know nothing about who you are. What I do know by the Holy Ghost is that depression left you through the hands of Brandon Clay. You were a manic depressant. Come on, let's pray. Let's go. You know it. They don't know it. It was hard to get out of the bed. It was hard to answer the phone. Something happened where this man's ministry woke something up in you. And you came alive. Come back, man. Oh, ho, oh, oh, ho, oh, oh, ho, oh, oh, ho, oh, oh, ho, oh. ho. Come back, come back, come back, come back. Come back. But the word of the Lord to you is multiply. The Lord said to tell you he wants more of you. You have to multiply yourself. It must be um, done. Your taxes. Is this wife? Hold hands. Where are you from? You're from Chicago. Oh, okay. You go to Living Word. Lift your hands. Your taxes are about to change. Something is happening in your tax bracket. And what's going to occur is the, the, the ventures that you've been after are going to open up. You've been very frustrated because some of the coaches were lying. But now, as you move into business and you move into your future, your tax bracket is going to change. And as it changes, you will need greater security in your relationships. Your friendships have to change. And it's going to be because of what God is doing with you from a business standpoint. Father, I loose that executive anointing. It is, an, it is an anointing for executive leadership on them. And as they transition and shift and yield, give them the favor of Joseph. <laughs> give them the favor of Joseph. Let it be so on their lives in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Okay. Uh, Who's over prayer right now at this moment? Who's a prayer leader? Is it Pastor Debbie or who is it? Come. Oh, okay. Come to me. Do you have a number two or is this just you? <laughs> the spirit of intercession burn on. Years of journeying and travailing and sojourning in the spirit come upon you.
Hey, Memphis, something is happening in this place. When Pastor went to Chicago, that wasn't just a natural promotion. Something has happened in the spirit. You've got to reach and climb this mountain. God is entrusting men with more challenges and more responsibilities. Lift your hands for 22 seconds and pray in the Holy Ghost as loud as you can. I want it to feel like Seymour in this building. Come on, let's go. Harder. Harder. Come on, harder. Transfer. Follow me. Transfer. Come on. Transfer. Transfer. Come on. Transfer. It's happening now. Ah! Transfer. Come on, let's go. Move in it, y'all. Transfer. Come in, honey. I know you're working. Come to me. Transfer. No more heaviness. Come on. Transfer. I look. It's all over this. Come on. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Come on. You're an intercessor. Cry harder. Cry harder. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Woo! Harder. Harder. Evangelism. I loose it on you now. Come on. Go with me. Come on, transfer. Pastor, I'm sorry. Tra oh, oh, oh. You call to homelessness. Oh! Come on, transfer. Be healed. I said, be healed. Will y'all help me shout? Harder. Harder. Come on, the spirit of wisdom.
will come back. Believe it. Receive it. It's happening in your life. I'm turning this over to Pastor. But I prophesy your comeback. It will happen. There are six of you that's been financially frustrated and you're trying to return to school. And you're frustrated because you keep getting words. I'm telling you what I'm hearing from the Lord, but you don't know how the money's going to work. If you're one of those six, run right now. Play. Let them praise Him. It's happening. I want runners. Let them shout. That's what I want. Come on. Run. I don't, I thought I said run, go. No, I didn't mean run to the altar. I meant run around the room. Shout for the paperwork. The paperwork opens the door. It don't make you who you are. It just lets them say, hey, how you doing? I prophet, okay, I don't have enough shouters yet. I prophesy our revival on your resume. Let's go right now. You're used to the upper room. You're not used to your credits. Go praise him. Go ahead, prophet. It's, it's there. Wow! He's doing something in your bio. You don't want to shout. Okay. We're going to. I'm not going to. Hey, hey, ho, ho. I'm sorry. I'm about to lose. Holy. You're about to be powerful on paper. And if you bind it on earth, okay. Hallelujah! We're gonna show. Hey, if you're one of them six, run again. I'm sorry, I, I'm not done. Run one more time. B A M A P H D E D D J D. Why are you running? Because I'm Daniel. And he made me ten times better than everybody in my field. And I've got the victory. My feet, my profession calls me blessed. Hallelujah! 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 Wow! Wow! It's both hands. I do both. I'm ambidextrous. I work with both of my hands. Cook and clean. Sing and shout. Preach and do business. Lift your hands and say both hands. Praise them, sugar. Hey! Both hands. Praise them. You gonna pay your house off? Come on, praise the run, sugar. No, oh, glory to God. I feel something happening. All nations, you know better. Home training. Somebody's praising. You sit here. There you go, sugar. Let you go. 
but go a little harder. Come on, let's go. Let's set it up for Sunday. Come on, hey. I'm making a comeback. Woo! I want everybody in here that's about to make a comeback. The devil thought you was out of here. But it's the third day for a lot of you. If this is the third day, and he rolled the stone away, I like that. I want you to grab somebody by the hand, because friends don't let friends dance alone. When I count to three, I want you to lose your mind for your comeback. All right, one, two, one, two, three, get it. Praise him, Memphis. Praise him. Why you shouting? Why you dancing? Because I didn't think I was coming back. God pulled me. Woo! Out of the miry cut. Out of the singing sand. He raised me up. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah.
Listen. I'm going to. I'm going to raise. A, uh, I'm going to raise an offering. But and and, and it need be so. Mm. But before I do, I want everybody in this room and online that thought they wasn't coming back. Like, like you had real fears. Can I recover from this? It, it wasn't just a matter of TV or like I wanna, I'm, I'm only talking to people who like sit in rooms like, man, I imagine life differently. I don't know what I believe. I don't know where I'm going. And you came back. I want everybody that's been raised. We're going to raise some money in a minute. Pastor's giving me the principle. I want 60 seconds of comeback praise. Now, this is personal. Here are the rules. This ain't got nothing to do with your house or your car your spouse or your church this has everything to do with the moments you had with God when you were like Lord take this cup but you came back now this praise is only for comeback Christians if you're not a comeback person chill out there you go son I'm open I want a whole minute of nothing but crazy praise for all the comeback people. Let's go. One, two, three, go. I came back, devil. Shut your mouth. I know you thought I was dead. Sight. <laughs> Oops. I came back. I need 20 praises. Come down to the altar. Hurry up. Get out of your seat and come dance. Hurry up. I can't do it long, but we got to do it strong. Look your neighbor in the face and say, let's go to the front. Come on. Come on. He's calling you to the front. Dance. Calvin, that's how you get it back, son.
his temple. Do what you want to do to it. But give me three days. I'll get back up. <laughs> I'm coming back. I want time to go. We're going to sow. We're going to sow. How many of you, and I want you to hear me, Apostle Derek, I love you. How many of you have had extreme circumstances? Don't leave if you don't have to. How many of you have had extreme circumstances in ex circumstances these last two years? It's extreme. Evictions and business splits and random issues. I want to sow before we get to Good Friday. Now, my story, it may not be yours yet. I can give myself out of anything. That's how I live. I can give it out. Hit yourself on your... Now, everybody in here that's believing that by the time you fall asleep in death, you have millions established to you. Slap yourself in the chest and say, I can give my way out of it. I can give... I'm trying to move forward, but I'm arrested. And mother in this red is dancing. Ain't, no, ain't nobody helping her. I, I need, I need 20 seconds. I'm getting. But God so loved the world that He gave. Praise up, Keandra. I love that thing. He gave. He gave. He gave. He gave. Yeah. We're going to give the secret. I'm um, the secret to effective giving. Listen to me. And if you hear it on a Sunday, where I'm preaching somewhere else, act like you're shocked. The secret to giving is asking. Problem is, when people give, they don't realize it's a form of an ask. And Jesus said, you have not. It's not just about knowing how to give. It's also about trusting what you ask. And so giving is an asking technology. When we give, we are also learning how to because when you give, it will be given to you. It is a form of intercession. I would that all of you not see your giving tonight as a donation and see it as an ask. I got something I'm asking for. And I'm gonna believe in faith that where my heart is, whether it's $100, 500 or 1,000, I'm asking. I'm gonna say something. Pastor Brandon's going to be upset at me. If you are one of 20 people that's believing God for a home, run right now. I'm giving you 10 seconds. Do it. Come on. Okay. Praise up Now. Hey. Let's go. Zero to 100. Come on, Zion. Let's clap. I want the lease. I want to be the landlord. Give me the multiple units. I'll take the home. Give it to me, the condos, the loans. <laughs> yeah, I'll take all of that.
because the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell therein. For he has established it upon the sea, pounded it upon the foot. Who, who, who in here let's do this quickly who in here has no money to sow raise your hand be honestly like you just don't have it to give raise your hand okay everybody around those people put some cash in their hands and do it now obey me I don't want one person without money or without seed if you don't have it to give do it now. Facilitate this. Do it quickly. Keep your hand up. Don't be embarrassed. Give them something to give. Well, I magnify you. Vincent, run around this church because you didn't sell out. Go ahead. Do it now. I don't know what happened, but I just saw something. But you didn't sell out. I'm trying. Hallelujah! Hey, I had a price tag on me. A barcode. But I didn't sell out. Okay. Does everyone have an does everyone have an offering? Y'all just sitting down. Ask somebody next to you for money. I see people in the back still sitting. If you don't have an offering, get some. Uh, glory. David, make sure these kids got money to give. Put some cash in their hands. Noah, take his money. But you have to give it. That's not for shoes. You have to. Okay. Cheating, 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 Jesus, 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 All right, now, the giving information is on the, is on the screen. Everybody's standing with something in their hand. Okay, I see my other partners. Somebody had an ankle accident. The Lord said your bone is healed. I don't know who that is. I just saw an ankle. The Lord said, take out and you're going to be healed. Um, yeah. I want everybody, hey, I want everybody giving in this. I'm trying to keep it together. Dory Ward, thank you. Jeanette Owens, thank you. All y'all, thank you. All right, does everybody have something to give? I want to make sure those that are sitting down have money. Make sure. Zion. Come to me, baby. We'll go over there and find out who ain't got money. Hurry up. Find out if they sitting down because they don't have money and then fix it. Ain't that hilarious? She's going to be so mad at me tomorrow. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus,
Put the phones in the air if you're giving. It's text to give. It's Anwan Mem. I want everybody, if you're watching me online, the Lord is touching several people to give a thousand dollars. That's watching online. The Lord God of your forefathers bless you one thousand times more. He's challenging you to break a barrier. If you're in the room. We're giving tonight. It's Holy Week. We are those that believe in the name of the Lord. If you have cash in hand, we have buckets, I assume. Glory. Hey, baby. You'll never be homeless. Your living arrangement will never be what it was. Give God the praise, because what you faced in 2019 is never coming back to you. It's not happening. Vincent, your grandmother's prayers were heard. They were laid up for you. You've not begun to see it. And because of your faithfulness, there was a temptation that came in the summertime where Memphis was almost not your home. You didn't say much about it, but the Lord knew your decision. And because you were faithful, there you go. That's how you respond. He's going to answer you. I don't know why y'all looking. If we was a family, we'd be shouting together. His affirmation is my confirmation. I better listen to God. And he'll do what he said he was going to do. Jesus. John ah! John. Jesus. Everybody. All right. Everybody that's giving. Put them, put them phones in the air. Everybody that's giving, put them phones in the air. We're going to give. Give. Um, I feel in my spirit that there may be two or three of you that need to give more than money. Something is in this room for cars and houses. Some of you have property that you just have. Some of you have cars that you just have. I dare you. I said, I dare you. Put something on the line tonight. And let the Lord answer you in faith. Yes, yeah, a couple of cars. It's a couple of cars. Some of you have apartments. You can give more than money. And if you do it now, you'll always be able to do it. Do it. Sow it. And I'm going to make you run up here and challenge you. Lift those offerings all the way up. Father, in the name of Jesus, you are Shema. That means you are both here and there. You're in the present. You're in the future. You're in yesterday. You're in tomorrow. And we trust you concerning our provision. I prophesy sales, commissions, in the direction of everyone that's giving sacrificially tonight. Investments and increase. Changes in how they're seen and viewed on paper. And a different level of receptivity for their ingenuity. And for everybody that stopped dreaming, I prophesy that this is a comeback scene. And as of this moment, effective immediately, 
we are the comeback kid and we're acting like 2020 did not happen and we're moving forward with fresh instructions into the future if you believe that by faith go ahead and give those offerings or come and bring it to these buckets let's go let's go do it